What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Nonsense Brewery for September 9th, 2021. My name's Alex Kaderi, one of your hosts for episode number 55. We have four drinks and hosts for you today. Uh, Dan Sawyer, go ahead and start off. What you got for us today, buddy? Well, believe it or not, I actually have an alcoholic beverage. Bro, you're lying. I, I didn't buy any beer. But I made myself a rum and sour with this big ass thing of Bacardi that I've had. Okay. Uh, Bacardi Gold, to be exact, from Cuba. Okay. <laughs> and wait, uh, you you, good. you you bought it from Cuba? Imported I think it, it it hails from Cuba. Uh, it, the recipe is from Cuba, but it's not made in Cuba. Okay. Well. Wow. You ignore lied. everything I just said. Yeah. What a terrible, it terrible host. From Cuba. Yeah. I mixed it with uh, lemon and lime juice and some water. Okay. And that's where we're at. Uh, Jerome, what's up? What's up, everybody? Uh, I am drinking on, drinking on, sipping on a Sierra Nevada Oktoberfest, another uh, North Carolina beer here for us. Fantastic. Um, oh, haven't, haven't had that one. And it no, I mean Oktoberfest is probably one of my like favorite beers, so I'm uh, I'm looking forward to this one. And CISO, what's up, man? Awesome, awesome. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night to whenever you're listening or watching us. I have uh, some Highland Single Malt Scotch whiskey. Can you guys see that the angle? Okay, it's kind of like Ooh. reflecting really weird. Um, it's called the McAllen. McClellan to love uh, here. And so fully matured in four different types of hand-picked European and American oak casks. So they moved it to four different barrels? That's a lot of work. I don't even know how that it's, stuff it's really works, good. man. It's a good scotch. It's excellent. Oh, no ice. Obviously, you can't. I don't want to mess up the flavor, so no ice. It's room temperature, so I think it's decent enough. Um yeah, excellent. It's neat. Excellent. Okay. What, it is neat. <laughs> in in exactly. more than one way. <laughs> um, but that that's it for me. I'm, I'm happy to be here and uh, glad to have had a long weekend. Mm, same. But, brother, Alex Kaderi, what's going on, man? Brother Alex. I am drinking a Sierra Nevada. Father Priest. Hazy little IPA. Oh, shit, Couple Sierra of- Nevada bros. Hey, hey, dink it with me. Dink. Hey. Uh, Hazy little, Hazy nice. little IPA, like you said, Sierra Nevada. Uh, let me give it a sip here. Really good. Huge fan of IPAs. Anywho, like I, I said, th- I thought you were gonna say huge, huge fan of Slurpee. <laughs> the Slurpee Turpy. Like I said, this is the Nonsense Brewery, where every week we'll be coming to you to provide some of our own comments on world topics and interesting beers or drinks, where you can watch or listen to us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast services around the globe i messed that up but you can also read our new <laughs> newsletter that's going to be sent out if you choose to read it uh wherever hey, podcasts are sold exactly the the nonsense brewery.com slash subscribe please do subscribe right. subscribe to the newsletter i, I mean i think a it's lot interesting of stuff that goes into that there is there is not just the effort but like i think it just shows you like i love the tweets the memes the hot takes all the good stuff that we have in there the last call deep dives it, yeah uh, for sure for sure. And it's like a nice little quick reference. Yeah. You know, it takes less than five minutes to check it's out. It's like if, so. if you yeah, want to be yeah. you know, part of our exclusive club that's pretty inclusive, just, you know, join <laughs> us. It's like our In- Patreon, but ex- you don't have to pay exactly. anything. If you'd like to throw a few bones the, our way. What the, the hell? hell? It's the free Treon. All right. So let's let's go ahead and get into it, guys. I got I got some content to to share with you guys. Um, mm. So let's go. I got home from school today, probably around three thirty or so, um, and I was that's like, a oh, weird sentence. Like at our age, that sounds what weird. What you it mean? Like threw, it threw me off saying you got home from school today. You, okay, Jerome. Question: I'm a Before you even get into that, yeah. do, do you have a before and after the school day pick? Because that's what a lot of parents are doing these days. It's like they take a pic of their kid that's all like cleaned up, and then after school they like. You know their hair is all a mess, and it's all like it's all crazy. Um, no, you got, I, I'll be. You got to take one of yours. I'll probably be looking at pristine before school and after school. Look, 
Look at these new wow. school J's I bought. Sheesh. Ooh. Damn. Oh, you do go to UNC. So I was about to say, for a second, I was like, did, does, does this guy go to Duke and he's wearing UNC Damn. colors? No, 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 no. No, yeah. F Duke. F Both Duke teams lost their UNC oh. family in this household. Okay, come on now. <laughs> Oof. Oof. We didn't have to bring that up already. Sorry, go ahead, Jerome. Jo- oh. uh, no. So, <laughs> whoever so I, get, you are. I get home from school, and I realize I don't have any beer, right? So I'm like, I got to go uh, go to the, the store, pick up some beer. So go to the store and grab my beer, no biggie, get in my car to leave, and uh, this lady hits me mm. in my car. And... I'm going to tell you guys a story the exact same way that I told the police officer story. Just put a photo uh, in in the group me for you guys' reference. So I'm I'm leaving the parking spot, right? I am – I'm going straight back, and I start to slightly turn. So the way the parking lot's set up, I'm going backwards. I'm turning so then I can drive straight out, right? Yeah, you're backing up to your left. I'm Correct. I'm backing up to my left. And so I'm backing out, and I am basically halfway out into the median. I'm already, you know, 30 degrees, let's call it, turned. And this lady, I see this this Ford, I don't know what kind of car it was, maybe like an Expedition or something. But I see it continuing to, to come backwards toward me. And as... As I see it, I don't know why, but my brain wasn't like, oh, hit the horn or, or do anything. It was just like, oh, I'm just going to stare in the rearview mirror and just watch this lady. Be- and she flashed her brake light. So I was like, oh, she sees me. She's not going to hit me. And I am just there, just in the middle of the parking lot, just standing still. And she just keeps backing up, keeps backing up. And then she hits me. And I was like. What the fuck? So then immediately I'm like trying to get out of the car, like take photos, like, you know, be like, hey, maybe we should call the cops. Like maybe we should leave everything here before I can even get two feet out of the car. She immediately like pulls her car forward, like back back into the parking lot, the parking spot that she was just in. Um, and so I move my car and then we exchange our information. And then she's like, hey, I just I really got to get back to work. So I'm going to go. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to call the police. And so I, so ex- we do exactly that. She leaves and then I call the police. He gets there, he gets my info. And then he's like, is the other lady not here? And uh, I say no. And he's like, well, I can't do a report if she's not oh here. Oh my gosh. And so I was like, well, I was like, well, I've got her phone number. Let me try to call her. And so I call her. She says she'll come right back. She comes back. He does the full report only to then come back to me and say, well, you really shouldn't have moved the cars. I I can't really say who's at fault. And I was like, Man. you can tell from the photo that I was out in the middle first. You know what I mean? Like she hit the side of my car. I'm like, how is this? How is this? I don't understand. So you just screwed? I, I guess. He just said the next step is just call progressive and like figure it out with your insurance. But let's, uh, let's take bets this week and I'll, I'll get back to you guys next week. How much do you guys think it's going to cost? I'm going to say $450. Fuck. Uh, no more. Well, what more, how, how much it'll cost you? Yeah. Well, how much the, the service bill will be. If, if they said no the one's quote. at fault. Yeah. If, if they say no one's at fault, I'm assuming I'm just going to have to pay for it myself. Right. Or like my insurance will pay for it slash whatever my deductible is. Yeah, I would say the quote on that would be. No, the part itself would probably be about three hundred, and the manual labor probably another hundred. Mm. Holy Dep- shit! Depends you really, where you think, go. You really mm-hmm. think it's going to be that expensive? Yeah, I was literally thinking something in the range of two to three hundred. I was thinking maybe like ten, fifteen dollars. <laughs> I get for five. Yeah, let's let's get let's get Mr. Belinsky out here and and just like knock it out with a hammer. We we could buff out those scratches. I mean, it was like three thousand dollars for them to fix my dents. Not that's not what I paid, but that that's when I got those when Alex's tree nutted on my car. Yeah, allegedly. Throw back to three thousand dollars. Did you pay that out of out of pocket or was that insurance money? Oh, I had I had a five hundred dollar deductible. Damn, so I'm probably gonna have to think, pay 500 bucks. Uh, well, depends. Depends what your I, deductible is. At a minimum, I think. Yeah. 
I think my deductibles around that range. I'll there's tell a, you right now. There's a yeah. lesson here. There's a lesson here. I mean, like we say in our newsletter and, and anywhere else, like, you know, get your own financial consultants and lawyers and, and all that stuff. But it's not a bad idea to consider insurance. Not a bad idea to, you know, make sure that, you know, the deductible is not crazy expensive. And yeah. um, the other thing is like you, I, I know I'm, we're obviously in hindsight and hindsight just everything makes sense, right? Uh, yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, moving the car, moving moving the car was probably not them. You should have told her, uh, no, not not moving it, and I'm taking a picture well, of uh, this I, well, entire so scenario. Well, so here was the problem: is that like she hit my car and then she immediately moved. You know what I mean? Like she before we even got out of the car, she immediately moved her car and pulled back into her her that's, spot. Yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. That's it's like tricky. you should have maybe just left your car there. Uh, that's and then, that's yeah, that's silly. Like, Barb says. Ninety percent of all car yeah. wrecks, you have to move out of the way of the road anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I like, call her and say, "Listen here, bitch, lawyer up, because Jerome's <laughs> we're Jerome's going coming to court. for you. We're it's going just to like court. Out of, I'm taking everything of, you own. I mean, out of principle, I think you know that's why a lot of people go into lawsuits." Is that like the whole point isn't like, let's say the lawsuit costs you more than it owes, but like out of principle, you can't let people get away with stuff. So that's why people yeah. go through lawsuits instead of giving people the money, because if not, then that's when like, mm. you know, it continues. You perpetuate a system of headassery. So she, she did not admit that she was at fault. Right. Quote. She told the police officer that she was fully stopped and that I hit her car. But I'm like, based off of where the dent is on my car, I just don't, I don't see how physics could play in that way. Hey man, weirder things you have know, happened. Yeah, That's a good point. You can't like sideways, right? Like what if would into I, her car? <laughs> yeah, like what if she thinks that like she's coming out straight and like I turned sideways into her car? I don't understand. I would not give up, man. I even though if it sounds easy, like to just be like, "Oh, I gotta pay whatever," or the insurance, like, unless like it costs you like a dollar to fix this, like I would make sure that this woman is, or this per, you know, it happens to be a woman, but this person is at fault because obviously, you well, didn't do it. yeah. Well, but, so the problem is that like the police officer told us that he can't say who's at fault, so he he literally just said we're each each just gonna have to deal with our own personal insurances to get it covered. I said, well, we're in a fucking Harris Teeter parking lot. Is there, Are there cameras in here? And he said, well, I deal with a lot of wrecks in this parking lot. And they don't have any cameras. And I was like, well, that sounds a lie. Funny. I would not take that as the truth, though, until you prove, you know, until you prove it. Not until you call guy Harris Teeter. <laughs> yeah. Call, call Harris Teeter himself and say, listen, Harris. <laughs> Do you know who I, know I am? Have those like, cameras. Show I me work, the tapes. I work for Harris Williams. Give me the tapes. Yeah, I, I pay your salary. I'm just no, saying, bro. But like, yeah. I, I just looked up my policy. I have a five hundred dollars deductible, Yeesh. so I'm gonna be, mm. I'm gonna be very upset when my quote ends up being five hundred and one dollars. That's about what happened with my windshield. It's, yeah. Uh, kind of blows. What are you gonna do? You well, know? What are you gonna do? No deductible, kids. Yep. In, do in, that's now I know. That's insurance is a scam, but the way society is set up, it's a necessary evil. That's that's my I opinion. Agree. I agree. Hot take. Hot take. There's there's just no way around it. Yeah. In a, in a happier other note, I had a uh, a very old classmate of mine from high school call me today to ask me some uh, some life questions. And as a as a side note, he said he loves the podcast. Oh. Wow. Shout, yeah. shout shouts out to, him. out to Jerome's yeah. friend. Shout out. Shout out Tony. Is your friend? You know. Is, is you your know friend. You Big are. Tony. Uh, yeah. Tony, Tony, if you're listening, and we know you are, we love you. Tony yeah, from Maryland. You, he said he he said he quote loves how we just crack open a cold one and and just talk about anything we want. That's right. It's a free that country. Kind of sums it up pretty mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. He should be our our PR rep. Is he is he uh, subscribed? Uh, He's not platform. subscribed, Tony. If you're watching <laughs> this, I'm looking directly into the camera. I'm looking directly into your soul when I he say is. this. I'm also looking at you, Tony. Sign up for the <laughs> newsletter, nonsensebrewery.com slash subscribe. It's fine. And that, that is a different web link than youtube.com slash drone bots. But yeah, I'll also subscribe to that one. Yeah. I love, you know, to kind of stay on the same theme though, like the little one, uh, the little video that you put on the Instagram 
uh, on your Instagram TV and. I think that one was just so funny, like the way Josh just rolled with the Dude. the Oak Inn or you know Nashville Alex. Uh, Asheville Park Inn. I don't know if you got to watch that, Alex. Oh, he, I, yeah. I listened to. Jerome was getting clown. Dude, he, he, he was getting he, he got he got clown left and right about that. At, I loved it. it. it was in so Josh's good. defense, it was so. Good. In Josh's defense, <laughs> was it in was it in Asheville or was it literally Park Inn? Because like he does have a good point. It was both. The way it was said, it was both. the way it was said. Hold on. 100%. Hold on. I, Hold on. No, I we're agree not, with we're not re, I have we're not rehashing this. I have to defend myself here. I went and There's nothing to defend, I, bro. I edited the video. I <laughs> said the Omni Grove Park Inn in Asheville. I literally said in twice. I said in, uh, in the Park Inn in Asheville. So, F well, Josh. I'm happy that's for all you. I say. That's all I got to say. All right. Nah, we love you, Josh. We, we miss you and I want you back. We tolerate but... you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The, uh, the um, Omni Park Grove in Nash Asheville. Uh, Nash and Nashville. Nashville. Yeah. Oh How God. lazy of Asheville to see. You... Oh, you know, Nashville's a good town. What if we just, we just dropped the end? We just dropped the end and then we're another town and oh we'll do God. the same thing. A bunch of bars. Never... What if we're never welcomed into Asheville again because of that? There's a good uh, chocolate good. place. I don't want to go. You can't make me. Yeah, yeah. Fuck hey, Asheville. You, you know uh, You know who has uh, a brewery in Asheville? <laughs> Alex, Probably someone stupid. Hold your drink up, Sierra Nevada. Sierra. Where's Mills? Ooh. Where's Mills River? It... Must be in uh, North Mills Carolina. River, probably in, in um, Asheville. It's in Mill City. I don't know about that. <laughs> okay. Well, should guys should we take a little bit of a break and uh, Mills River it. is in Hendersonville, North oh, okay. Carolina. Okay. Hey. Oh, I should have known that. There's a Henderson yeah, let's take, let's take a break, Ski. I gotta go we'll grab we'll come back movies. after the break. Right. Gra grab another drink, fellas. Cheers. Cheers. I love you. Welcome back to the D Club, where we each talk about each other's Ds. We're going to play Dinker Ball next, so I'm going to pull down my pants, and if you see a Dinker oh. Ball, you're going to guess which one it is. Is it Dink or Ball? Dink? <laughs> Yo, I just got to, after that, that was, I just, that was dumb. I, I have to say, my parents watch this podcast. Now. That's I'm joking. That's wild in the shit you just said. That's not nearly the worst thing no. we've said right. on this podcast. I think, for sure let's, let's bring it back for real, for real, for real. Uh, no, no, that was, that was for certain for I me. Mean, I don't know. I'm staying in. All right. I'm staying in. Thanks, Shout, out. Shout out Jerome Shout out Jerome Spa. <laughs> that's the, that's the baddest, <laughs> baddest bit you know. Um, exactly. But now, welcome back, uh. We had we had a chance to refill our drinks. Uh, I think we're going to talk about a few things, but one thing that I would like to talk about. Okay, I just beat a video game, and it's like a fantastic game, game of the year contender for sure. Okay. It's it's on Game Pass if you have it. It's called Psychonauts Two. Awesome game. Basically, like the whole premise is you're like a little you're like a ten year old child, but like he became part of like this secret spy society where you can like go into people's minds and stuff. But like your whole goal is to, like, go into these people's minds and, like, kind of fix their issues. So, like, one of them is this guy's an alcoholic. Well, you have to figure out why he's an alcoholic and try to, like, help him out. Or uh, some people have big regrets. Or, like, I don't know. It's a really interesting story. Um, gameplay, it's very hmm. similar to um, Mario 64 or, like, just different platforming games. So if you ever played Banjo-Kazooie, maybe. Um Oh shit, the, Banjo Kazooie. The humor is on point. It's hilarious. Um, the main character is voiced by Richard Horvitz, who does Billy from Billy and Mandy or Invader Zim. Um, and there, are Jack Black's in the in the game. It's by the same people who did Brutal Legend. How how have I never heard of this? What's it called again? Psychonauts. Psychonauts, like astronaut. Psychonauts. Yeah. I'm showing there was an original one in 2005, yes. and this is this the is sequel. sequel. And I played the original way back in the day, okay. and it was one of my favorite games. Got it. Really? Yes. It, I've I've never heard of it. It's so good. It's so good. I, I, I promise you, like, if you if you have enough time, go ahead and sit down and play it just for a few levels. It can be kind of like, well, what the hell is going on at first, but you don't really need to play the original. Hey Alex, what's, Any... uh, what's what's the likelihood we can get some uh, some gameplay videos of that? The likelihood? I just beat it. I actually, I just beat all of it. Uh, how, how do you? How wow. do you, I can get screenshots of it. Wow. It's a beautiful game. 
Z- zero likelihood. Play it Give again. me some commentary of your, do they, do your they play have by a, plays. Do they have a new game plus? They do, and I think I might do it. So, like, one of the worlds, like Jack Black's, you go into Jack Black's mind, and it's like, uh, have you ever seen um, the Beatles, like, the cartoon movie? It's, like, in that artistic style. Like, each each mind has a different style to it. It's it's really interesting. I don't know. Interesting. Yellow submarine. Yes. Hey, well, uh, if you guys want to uh, crowdsource us, you know, uh, help us fund Alex's, you know, buying Alex's equipment so he can... He can, I don't know, record gameplay footage. I don't really know how yeah, that give, works. Give me maybe. a Delgado. I think, um, I think this game was actually crowdsourced too. It was, it got over like two million dollars on like Patreon or Fig or whatever it's called. Oh wow, yeah. it's impressive. And, oh, Elijah Woods in it. That's yeah. Oh my god, yeah. they've had a lot of like big names. They got, they got the people. I really so this have is, never heard of this. Wow, this is a big it's game. A huge right? game. Yeah, it is. If you look at the rating, the Metacritic is like pretty too. good for it. It's like eight, above eighty six percent. I think. What uh, what did you get it for? What platform? Xbox. Xbox. Yes. Okay. It it touches. Is it like a triple A like sixty dollars for the game? I would pay. I would thing? pay sixty dollars for it. It's a really good game. What does it cost right now? I think it's sixty dollars for PlayStation and Xbox. Wow. But it's on Game Pass, like I said. Oh, yeah! I missed that part. I don't know if you said it yeah. earlier. I missed since, that. Since Microsoft bought out Double Fine Studios, everything that they like buy out is going to be on Game Pass. So this game is free if you have Game Pass. And it was like day one release. It came out actually a week ago. So, interesting. Interesting. so we want Microsoft I, to continue, continue buying more yeah, companies. Yeah, as long as they let so, them have the well, free reign that they have. It's kind of like how it's Got it. it's just always going to be a big battle between Microsoft and Sony for like who can who can buy the most studios or whatever, right? Like Sony Sony just last year, I believe, or maybe in 2019, built its they literally just call it Sony Studio or Sony Sony Game Studio or something like Sony that. Interactive. Um, Sony Interactive, maybe yeah. Um, and they they've been buying up smaller studios to to make PlayStation exclusive. Same with Microsoft, like. That's where the battle is going, is who has the better exclusive games. For sure. For sure. But you're, but... you're like, you're always going to have those big name games that, like, will never give up the, the revenue of one side versus yeah. the other. So, like, you're always going to get, you know, like, Call of Duty on both systems and, yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff. I, and in my personal opinion, Alex, I'm, I'm curious to see what you think. I think multiplayer games need to be on all systems with cross-play compatible so everyone can play with everyone but i'm fine with the story heavy games being exclusive so i would you know i, mean? I would yes. agree with you 100 percent. the way that yes. the way that multiplayer games need to go it needs to go with ease of use co- compat- compatibility so if, if you were wanting to have a platform that's for everybody like IE multiplayer games, like Fortnite's do and Rocket League's do, and go ahead and just do the cross platform. Make it right. ease of use for everybody and I have agree. fun with everybody. I agree. Because if you want to push your platform, 100%. if you want to push your own console, make exclusive games that are for your desired audience. Like I don't think I don't yep. think people who are going to exactly. playing multiplayer games are necessarily looking for a story driven game. They just want to play with their friends. No, exactly, exactly. Because like Fortnite, yep. they're I guess yep. technically there's a story mode to Fortnite, yeah. right? Just Save the world. People only play the is people there, only play is, the battle. Is Royale. Fortnite still in no, beta? No, it's 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 full fledged now. Because it was in, like it was, was it beta? It was in like test mode ever for a while. Year, I, probably two years. I honestly don't know if Fortnite, what it was supposed to be, Fortnite ever got released, like. And and this isn't even Fortnite one. This is like Fortnite like three or four, and it it's it originally back in the day used to be like a very story driven game, and that's what it was supposed to be. Then they just happened to, and I don't think they were the first ones to come up with it. Battle Royale. Um, they just happened to make their version of the battle royale, and that is what took off. Um, and I don't know what about Fortnite is better than like. PUBG, like Player Unknown's Battle Royale. In my personal opinion, free. I like PUBG better. It was free. It was the first free the Battle difference? Royale. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. It's free. I think it was kind of like simpler, more 
kid friendly. I, I remember being yeah, in college yeah. when it first it came good. out, and there were like there were like parties going on at like frat houses, and people would be like playing Fortnite while like all the stuffs going on in the background. Really? Yeah, yeah, we were we were running it hard. <laughs> really? Rest in peace. Wow. Oh yeah. Hold up. Why? Because you mentioned it, Dan. Did, didn't they get kicked off campus or something like that? What's the deal with? Uh, oh yeah, I don't with know. K A at UT. Uh, they got in trouble like two years after I left, which they got too big. That was basically the problem. There are too many people, and what, now uh, some other. What did like, they get in tiny, trouble for? I really don't know, honestly. I'm sure it was he does, he, hazing guys, or for for everyone for everyone listening here. Dan just doesn't want to say because he's embarrassed. He knows. Sworn secrecy. He he hundred no, percent knows. He's not supposed to say that it, kind of it stuff. Went it went downhill. It went downhill because Dan left. It was it was he was the straight I mean, edge. I believe that. I believe that's that was the, the voice of reason. <laughs> I believe that's the truth. Hundred percent. But some that. like some small frat is in our house now, and somebody I think it was Dean sent me a video of them putting their letters up on our house. And oh, you hate to see it. Just, wow, just so hurt my soul. So they you hate actually to see it. like are not on campus anymore. They're oh, like yeah. gone. They're renting the house out to whoever else. Wow. Who pay? Some so, no name. But but typically, like with these suspensions of frats and stuff, isn't it typically just like a short term thing and then they come back? Yeah, I'm sure they'll be back eventually. I, I really, I honestly, I don't guess the know. question is like, who would bring it back? You know, yeah. well, it's like it's like yeah, they'll need like a s- charter. It's like Pike when they got kicked. It's a off. process. That, for for people that don't know, P- Pike got kicked off because of uh, the butt chugging incident, which is famous. But uh, they were kicked off the for years. Famous University of Tennessee butt chugging. They were kicked off for years. If they came back, like surely we'll be back at some point. Yeah, uh, I, I guess I'm th- I'm trying to like logically think through it, right? And I'm like, say. If you're off campus for five years, then it's like at that point, a full cycle of students have have been through the school and no one even knows what K.A. is. It's like at that point, how would it ever be revived? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the national group would have to come right. in and basically re- restart it. Right. And which I guess happens I, a lot. I guess. Yeah. I guess especially at somewhere like Tennessee where like, you know, Greek life is a very big part of the university experience um and it's just a big university in general it's probably much easier to to restart something like that at tennessee than at maybe like a very small liberal arts college somewhere i don't know yeah and they have like a vested interest in making sure it comes back because that's revenue for them right a large chapter you know i'm actually i'm actually curious about this dan how if you know, if you had to guess, what would you say? Like, how important to the University of Tennessee's culture is Greek life? Like, what percentage of the student population is in Greek life? How important do you think it is? Because the other three of us on this on this specific podcast, like, we weren't we weren't in Greek life. You know, I mean, Daniel was. Yeah, I thought you were in Bucks. Yeah, yeah. So, what? like, I didn't stay involved throughout the yeah. rest of college, but. I think I mean wait, I'll let what, Dan answer his question. Wait, but you were you were in Bucks like technically yeah, through like, through senior year? No, no, no. Like so, like at least through freshman, maybe sophomore. Like because you have to, I think, pay dues and all that to be like official. But gotcha. I think the I answer is essential. That. Like I think, I mean, you could give a mon- bunch of reasons to why they're essential. But like I had some really good friends that I still keep in yeah. touch, like with, and I even live with some Sigma Kai's, and like I think it. Say what you will, but it does create community, and it's a mm-hmm. certain kind of community. But like, that's diversity, bro. And if you don't yeah. like diversity, then yep. you got a problem, you know. So I'm, I'm all, I'm all well, about so, it. There's, there's things here and there that you know, <laughs> excuse me, people have different I, opinions I will on. Say, okay, I, I have a lot of but, uh, strong opinions about this. I'd like to get Dan's opinion first, and then I'll, uh, I'll give you guys my. I didn't know opinions. we were gonna get into it. Then you'll, it, then you'll just get <laughs> into it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how we, I don't know how we got here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it wasn't like a essential part of my college experience, but I made a lot of friends in there, and I enjoyed it. And I, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm still close with a couple of them, and I think it gave me stuff to do and kind of enhance my social life. I mean, I met my girlfriend yeah. through it, so that's, that's kind true. of a, hey, 
a plus. That's true. Major but, one. Yeah, I don't know. I think because it's weird because it hasn't been like a long time aspect of college. I think only in like the seventies is when it kind of became popular. Yeah. Um, so obviously you can have it without it, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I think other, you know, there's problems in every organization. But right. Right. Sure. Overall, I think it's, it's not a terrible thing. It's yeah. It could be yeah. done better in a lot of ways, but I would be upset to see it go and away. What couldn't be, right. what couldn't be done better in a lot of ways, you know? Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Here, here's my, uh, my evolving outlook about Greek life. When I was in college, I was a very strong proponent against because I felt like, you know, like the hazing was like a big issue. I thought like the cliquish kind of nature of it was a very big issue. Plus, on top of that, like, and you guys probably understand as engineering students, we don't really understand the concept of like networking, or at least I didn't understand the concept of networking. I felt like you know, going, being an engineering major, you literally just like, you do the work that's expected of you and you get a, a co-op or internship or whatever. And then you go to some sort of job fair and you get a full-time job offer and that's it. Like you don't right. have to network. Um, and this, this might be a little bit of a blanket statement. So I apologize in advance, but it seems like most of the people in Greek life belong to non-science related majors like Mm -hmm. more business related majors more like finance accounting or like artsy type majors where networking is much much more important so where i'm going with this is since being in my mba program and like understanding the importance of networking and like understanding what that is i have a lot more respect for it because like there have been so many people that have been willing to like move mountains for me just because I am a UNC like Keenan Flagler MBA student. And I'm sure it's the exact same way in, in Greek life where, you know, if you have that connection with someone like you're a KA and they're a KA or whatever, then like you automatically have that connection and they're like willing to put you in contact with whoever you need to be to like get you to the next level, you know? So in terms of like a networking aspect, I think, it honestly is probably a very good good thing to have to get in yeah. touch with like very important people that can do things for you. Um, and again, to reiterate your point, there certainly are like things that could be done better. Yeah. Like I think the the hazing is definitely an issue still. And sure. I think like uh, yeah, like I don't know, maybe don't party as sure. much. But I get it. Sure. I get it. Boo. I mean, you said a lot in there to unpack, so I'll just hit it real quick. Like the um, if you meet enough people, there were like a significant amount of different kinds of engineers in a lot of the fraternities that I met. Obviously, not mm-hmm. a massive portion, but in the same sense, a massive portion of the university is an engineer in the second place. This, right. The other thing you said, like the networking, um, I think that's where like we are building engineers, build solutions for people, not just, you know, we're building a world for people. Like this isn't just because like, okay, yeah, physics is cool and it's all these like laws and you know mathematics are sick but like we're building it to make a world that works so like when you fail to see the connection of trying to understand the people that you're building solutions for you miss the big picture of why like i'm studying circuits week after week trying to you know like even though i'm not involved in that like that's at least what i told myself right um yeah so i but like again like this is the beauty of life bro like you could think about things over time and revisit and this is why people need grace to revisit their perspectives and there you go yeah like now you i you know i 100 percent agree 100 percent agree that kind of like gets into a, a completely different topic but i do think um i do think people should be allowed to change their thoughts you know what i mean like oh yeah i i, I started off For sure my my perspective by saying that that like my thoughts on on Greek life have have evolved over time, and I think I kind For of sure. explained how like it's changed over time. You did. I think that's a big problem. I liked it. Is like, uh, is people will say something at one point in time, and like society just won't let them change their thoughts. But it's like, you know, if if your final goal is you want growth out of someone, like you want 
like this yeah. kind of gets into like the topics of like cancel culture and stuff. If you want growth out of someone, if you want someone to change, you have to allow yeah. for that to happen. Yeah. You know, it, they, you they want people to be born perfect. It's like hardcore right. religious people right. uh, want somebody to be born perfect. And then people who are uh, completely modern want people to be like, why, why don't you t- No, you got to give people space in both directions right. to see what they, and, and uh, like, I feel that. you know, to, to kind of, to kind of clarify my point there. Like, I do think it's an issue if someone says some fucked up shit or does some fucked up shit and then continues to right. do that. Obviously that's sure. an issue, but it's like, sure. if you make a mistake or not even a mistake, if you do something wrong on purpose, but then you're willing to change after that, or, you know, accept that you did something wrong and change after that. I'm fine with it, you know. Cool, cool. I'm I get like, it. I have have you have you actually done the work to to grow? If if genuinely right. yes, then okay. Yeah, you know. That's why I say. Go ahead. Uh, I was just I was Alex. just gonna say like I agree like it's it's just so difficult to like. Well, I'm not I'm not saying this about me, but I'm saying it just in general. It's it's really difficult to acknowledge someone else's growth if you haven't acknowledged the growth in yourself, like you have to have that perspective mm-hmm. in yourself too. That's, that's oh, kind yeah. of like the whole, you gotta go through it. like, like Robert Downey Jr. For example, like he had a great turnaround of his yes. career. He turned everything yes. around, but like people before he started Iron Man, people were like, this, this guy's washed up. He's never going to be doing anything like that. But some dude took the chance to like, all right, you've changed. I see your growth. I, I don't think anybody else would be more perfect for this role than you. Like, because I could see that. You know what I right. mean, and and it's, it it right. almost takes like someone else to acknowledge it first before other people will acknowledge it as well. I, I that that's just like an offhand comment. I just think that like if if it doesn't start with you, who else will? Right. Yes. Hundred percent. And that oh, I love you it. know speaking of speaking of like the Disney Marvel stuff, like uh, there was something that I saw recently where. Um, I think it was it was Simu Liu, the the guy that plays Shang Chi, yeah. the the main lead actor, right? Um, Bob Iger, he, the the president of Disney, had said something about like, you know, they were doing some sort of special release for this movie that they've never done before, and Simu got upset and was like, we you know we are not your experiment, you know, and there were a lot of people that were like, what the fuck are you talking about, Simu? Like all they're doing is messing with the release schedule of the movie, um, what does that have anything to do with, like, you, you being an experiment? But in a in a weird perspective, I, I never thought that I would take this stance, but in a weird perspective, I kind of agree with him because I'm like, you know, there have been, what, at this point, 23, 22 Marvel movies, right? Sure. It's like, why do you pick the one that is – a all Asian cast, like the the first of its kind, to be the one that you mess with the release schedule. Why not do that with Black Widow? You know, sure. Which is like already Black, a part. Black Widow kind of got kind of got screwed yeah, in its own did. way. It, it was supposed yeah. to be released like they a did. Year they ago. did. Yeah, mess with you're it. right. You're right. It it did. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, I I was just the, I, I don't know. I think we're in this I'll, weird phase. I, I think we're in this weird phase of like of the Marvel I phase. Where they're like, all right, we already did our, our Infinity Saga. It's time to try something different. And Black Widow, right. ho- Far From Home, yada yada yada. All of those, all of those mo- movies, they're, they're we're, we're stepping into something new. So like the new like Captain Marvel movie, I think it's called the Miss Marvels, if I'm not mistaken. Um, oh, I actually think that's a separate movie or series. I'm not sure. It's gonna it's gonna I be it's, it's gonna be the next Captain Marvel movie. Like that's confirmed, but it's okay. going to have. Okay. Um, if you haven't seen uh, WandaVision or anything else like that, no spoilers there. But I think the new hero that's going to be introduced is going to be Kamala Khan, who is uh, Miss Marvel. Um, yeah. And I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna do something kind of funky with that in like introduction as well. So just like in in the upcoming movies, yeah. it's just going to be different. I, I, they're going to try some different yeah. stuff. Now, did right? It, they have to. Did it kind of fall like on? Kind of weird because they try to do this with like Shang Chi, yeah, probably, yeah, <laughs> right, right. What do, like, what do they do? I think they just messed with the theatrical release, for, like, I, and this could be completely wrong. I this is just what my understanding of the situation is. So, 
I think it was just like a regular theatrical release is like, I don't know, let's call it like 90 days, okay? And with Shang-Chi, they're doing a shorter window, um, and be- they're doing a shorter window so they can release it on Disney Plus sooner. Yes. Mm. Um, and Simu Liu's issue was, you know, this is socially like a very big moment for the Asian community. Why would you do that with this specific movie? Um, rather than doing it with something like Eternals that has like a really big cast or doing it with Black Widow that like already has like a known cast. Why'd you pick the, the Asian movie to do it? Um, that being said, I went and watched it on opening weekend, and shockingly, there was no one there. Really? Yeah. Same. So I, you know, I don't know what that says about the movie because yeah, maybe, maybe I, that's why I, they I think did the it. movie. I think I've heard nothing but people don't want to go to theaters. I've heard nothing but good things about the movie, which is very surprising because, like, like you said, I haven't seen anybody go to movie theaters since the start of the pandemic. Ye- right. Right. Yeah. And I, I will say, like, you know, Barbara didn't want to watch this movie because it's like. Marvel has done such a good job of building this, like, immaculate universe where everything connects. It's it's so hard to bring in, like, something brand new, you know? You feel like you have um, to watch it. You feel like you have to watch yeah, it. Yeah, but you feel like right. you have to. So I, I went with my sister on, uh, on Friday, last Friday, and I'm not going to lie. In my personal opinion, this was one of my favorite Marvel movies ever. Really? I thought it was, I thought it was fantastic. I thought the way they did the movie was amazing. Um, so I, I was really impressed with it. And at the same, and we went on opening weekend. You know, the movie came out midnight on Thursday. We went 7 p.m. Friday. So opening day still. Um, and there was no one in the movie. We went to the, to the big, like, IMAX theater in Knoxville. And there were probably, COVID, bro. let's call it two, 300 seats. COVID. And there were maybe 30 people Damn. in the theater. So, I and mean, you might COVID. be right. You might be right that it's like a COVID thing, but for where I was, like I was in Knoxville, Knoxville doesn't have any sort of mandates on anything. Like, you know, people are still doing stuff. No one's wearing masks. Half the people aren't vaccinated. Like, I, I don't think it was a COVID issue. I think people just aren't excited about this movie. And I don't, I'm I don't super know excited about the movie. I haven't seen it yet. I saw Black Widow. Is. I I need to see Shang Chi. I really do. I, re- I want to see it so bad. Yeah. It was. It was. Is, is, I haven't, it, haven't I seen either. I'm I, I, behind. I saw the one shot they put on Disney Plus that was released in 2014. I was like, man, this is going to be a good tie-in. They they started playing this out seven years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, I'll give you a little uh, a little glimpse into it that wasn't actually in the movie. They played like a little behind the scenes clip before the movie. Apparently, the way that it like ties into the universe. Semi spoilers if you guys don't want to listen, skip this part. Um, the way that it ties into the to the universe is apparently going all the way back to Iron Man yeah, One. Ten Rings. Um, yep, Iron Man was selling weapons to an army called the Ten Rings. And that is the army that Shang Chi's dad is like the leader of. So he's the Mandarin. Um, wow. His dad. Yes, which is the other cool thing. So in it was that Spoilers Iron Man two or three? Three. three, three, In Iron Man three, there's a guy named the Mandarin, and at the very end of the movie, you find out that he's an actor. He's not the actual Mandarin. So, turns out Shang Chi's dad is in fact the actual Mandarin. That's dope. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't call himself that. That's just like a, a name that they gave him in Iron Man three. Um, but yeah, you find out that Shang Chi's dad is the Mandarin, and he controls the ten the ten C- rings, in, in, which is the name of his army. In the comics, the, the, he, the Mandarin was real. He can, he can, he controlled the ten rings. But like in right. um, in the one shot they did was they went back to the actor. And like they sent in a, an assassin to like murder him. He's like the real Mandarin sends his regards. I'm like, Damn, right? That's dope. That's dope. Right. And so it's. I mean, so they did find a way to like tie it all in. You know, found a way to make it all tie in. I'm, but it was. Uh, it was I'm great. more excited about Shang Chi than I am the Eternals. That's my hot take. Yeah, that one doesn't make sense to me, bro. Really. Eternals That's are dumb. Thing. They're they're a bunch of weenies. They didn't help. 
I think they, yeah. I think they but they got they got Angelina Jolie. I want to say the Pixie uh, erased their minds due to some great tra- tragedy or something like that. That's why like they've been gone. Oh, that sounds <laughs> sounds awfully convenient. Yeah, it's a Deus Ex Machina yeah. for sure. You talking about <laughs> you talking about the Kipsy? the city? Sure. sure. I don't know what I'm talking uh, about. I don't even know what I would I'd call that last section. But we, but that was, we, I call, I'm calling that release <laughs> schedules. <laughs> We've been running kind of long here. Does, does, do you guys want to yeah, run into to last call? Yeah. All right. Let's do, well, let's yeah, let's do let's, let's, I apologize. That's my fault. Oh, I've got let's run one. into it. Let's start off with Daniel and CISO. Cool. So um, we're, you mentioned Robert Downey Jr. I'm plugging in this podcast called Smartless. Really cool set of guys. You can figure it out. But they hosted Robert Downey Jr. talking about that whole thing that uh, Alex oh, alluded nice. to. So um, if you want to, it's Smartless. And I can name off the, the, the guys. But, yeah, just look it up. You'll find it. That's it for me. Okay, cool. Uh, Dan Sawyer. Uh, this just dawned on me. My last call is to listen to last call the country song that I just made. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be available somewhere. It's got everything you'd want in a stupid country ballad. Dude, is this is every, this how every you, bachelor is this how you... and bachelor every bachelorette and bachelor party needs to listen to that as they fly into Nashville or take the taxi or whatever mm-hmm. into the city or, or Uber. I that's just, the that's I, that's got to be. I just got to ask, like, is is this how you guys feel when I plug my own shit on this podcast? No, just I don't like, know how you feel. I'm hyped just as like fuck. Did you listen defeated, to it? Defeated, just like defeated, <laughs> and like, what the fuck? I don't feel hyped at all. Did you listen to it? <laughs> no, man, I don't feel hyped as hyped as fuck. Whatever. I, yes, you plug your stuff. Yes, I, I did. <laughs> I did. I did listen to it, Dan. For for your sake, I wish it was on a platform so I could like legitimately support you. Um, rather than just downloading the file and, and listening to the song. Let's just link, uh, let's just link do? the, the document, or the, 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 the Google in, Drive. In, yeah, in the, the newsletter. Google Drive document. Oh, I'll put <laughs> it on SoundCloud. That's what I'll do. There you go. There you go. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll go next, Alex, Jerome. before uh, bringing it back to you. My, my last call is, have you guys ever seen on, like, Hulu, like, any of the Gordon Ramsay TV shows? <laughs> No, you guys don't watch like Hell's Kitchen or like Master I mean, I, used I mean, not to. on, not on Hulu. Not on Hulu. Yeah, yeah I've seen the old ones. In, in general, in general. Yeah, we know what it is. Shows? Shit, yeah, sure, sure. Um, I, I definitely got to give a shout out to to Hell's Kitchen. This, this season they're doing like a, uh, I think they're calling it like Young Guns, and so it's all like young people anywhere between like twenty one and twenty five, and they they just got down to the last five. These kids are like absolutely killing it, man. They're they're doing so well, and just the show's very entertaining because Gordon Ramsay's just constantly yelling at people, you know. Um, so great, great show, Master Chef, another good one. Those those are my recs for the week. Alex, uh, bring us home. Bring us home. Uh, I I I, I play Psychonauts too, or if you don't get Game Pass, because then you can play it on your phone or computer. Anywho, uh. That's it for the Nonsense Brewery. Thank you all for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed what you were sipping on. Cheers. Bye. Bye.